I think it was early 2015. I in the first two weeks, I gen, like I, I built the founder account to uh, over 10,000 followers in two weeks, and I doubled our magazine subscriber base. Hello, founder audience. You know, last time you saw me, I was on the cover of the magazine. Now I'm in your ear once again with my smooth, very wide impersonation and my uh, my sensual marketing topics for you today. Uh, what are we talking about, Nathan? Instagram? Yeah, Instagram. Instagram. I I gotta say, um, you you hit me up about two weeks ago and you said, hey, you know, I'm doing an anniversary episode on on the podcast. Uh, we're also launching a product and I'm launching IG Dom again. Do you want to come on and, and reverse podcast, interview me about it? And I'm like, man, what do you want me to talk about? You know, but then I remembered, you know, Instagram really has been, it's been kind of life changing for me if I'm just being honest. Hmm. Yeah. It's been it's crazy, been man. Like even when we yeah. went to Vegas and stuff. Yeah. I made so many friends. I mean, I got, I mean, such a, Instagram has changed my life in so many ways. I didn't think it would. You know, just a stupid picture sharing app. No, it's not. Um, so, okay, let's go back to this. March 2000, uh, March 2014, I remember you started talking to me about Instagram. And this was when I, I, I believe it was you renamed it founder at that point. Um, you were working on just building up your subscriber base of the digital magazine itself. Yep. Because you didn't have your first product yet. And you started to build up the follower base and the readership with Instagram. Take us back there. Yeah. So I think it was late 2014, early 2015. Um, yeah, look, I had um, some, I had a friend, his name's Jake. He runs a company now called Coconut Bowls. At the time he didn't run that company back then. It didn't exist, but he had some other e-commerce companies. So um, he was like, man, Instagram so powerful. You got to get on it. And I, and I was like, oh, but like, do you reckon it'll work for me for founder? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. You, it probably wouldn't, I don't think it'll work for you. I think it only works for visual products. Like if you're in the health or fitness space or something like that. And I was like, okay, but hypothetically, if I were to start using it, what would I do? And he laid out this kind of like super simple game plan. And I, I followed some of it and then I kind of re-engineered some more of it. And then in the space of, yeah, I think it was early 2015, I, in the first two weeks, I gen, like I, I built the founder account to uh, over 10,000 followers in two weeks and I doubled our magazine subscriber base and which, which wasn't super large. Right. And um, I was just like, yeah, I think I took our MRR from like, three grand to six grand a month or something. And, and it was just like, wow, like I'm onto something here. And I saw like this subscription spike and all these people signing up and, and yeah, that's when it was kind of like, yeah, look, I'm onto something. And I just kind of went down this path of, of just battle testing, going through the motions, working through it, working through it. And uh, where, well, with five years down the track, here we are, it still works. Like it's an incredible yeah platform over five years yeah um and you can uh, and, and just so you guys know too you can go on socialblade.com you can look up the founder account you can see nathan is not fucking around like that's he, a lot in, in an age of of recession in a lot of places the founder instagram account is still growing uh I, yeah you're so consistent with it um and uh and yeah it's been what's interesting too is that you know, back in back in 2014, obviously that was like social media golden age, where like the technology was changing just fast enough, and you could still get a lot of organic traction, and it was just that right time and place. And that's luckily when I got on there with you after you you bugged me to get on there. Now, five and a half years later, same platform, same essential technology, although there's some new innovations now, like video and live and all that stuff, but. Although it's not as easy to grow organically anymore, there are still tons of ways you can use the platform itself to grow a business. And I know this uh, both like looking anecdotally at myself and also seeing it in other people. 
that's true, right? Even nowadays, you can still use uh, this platform to to grow a business quite quickly. Yeah, hundred and ten percent. Like um, one thing that I have done is I've taken a whole new fresh business, uh, which is Emily's business, Healthish, and you know that that business has only been around for a couple of years, and we've been able to to grow that. It's 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 on the path to over a hundred thousand followers. That's a, you know, a million dollar plus a year business. It's doing exceptionally well. And uh, it's, it's all coming from Instagram. Um, starting to run some Facebook ads now, but for the most part, it's all coming from Instagram. If we pulled up the Shopify dashboard, you'll see it even says like majority of your customers, you know, 70, whatever, all your referrals are coming from Instagram and the content that we get from it. So I've, I've tried to kind of prove to myself because there were a lot of skeptics, you know, oh, it was easy back then when, you know, founder did it or like, you know, so I've taken a whole nother fresh business and I'd be happy to do it again. It's so powerful, right? Like you're, you're seeing it right now, like with your, like your new business, right? Like, are you using it? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny too, because in, in before the show, before we were rolling, and maybe this is in a deleted scene now, I was, I was saying, Nathan, I'm mad at you because every time I have some sort of inflection point, it's usually because you gave me an idea that I initially rejected and then I revisited it. Um, e-commerce was one of those ideas. And as I was kind of like, you know, over the past couple of years, you know, I've written the book and I was feeling like, ah, I need to make a change. I want to do something different. And, but I still want to combine the skills that I have and figure out how those fit in. And I'm not going to go into my whole thing, but I started, I started to work on a business idea that I put down a few years ago and I picked it back up. And, I've started to have a lot of success with this particular idea and, and Instagram itself in its own way is just as a part, a powerful part of growing this e-commerce business as it was growing my personal brand. And those are two completely different types of business. When you think, uh, you think personal brand, you think, Oh, gaining followers and, you know, um, and selling info products. But then you have something where you sell a physical product in my case, a DVD, and now we're getting influencers to market and we're building legit sales channels through it. And I'm like, him, this app, even even without spending a lot of money, still works for driving traffic. It's crazy. And like one thing that people don't think about as well, or that often don't think about, is it's not just like if you, it's not like a direct response straight away. Like if somebody sees your brand, they might follow you, and then over time you can build that relationship with them, and then you can put out an offer on your stories or your feed, and then they might buy. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is quite often, it's not even about the sales. It's about the content, like the amount of like what we call, uh, you know, money posts or, you know, UGC, user generated content like Emily has for Healthish of people loving the product and using the product and doing video reviews of the product on their stories and whatnot and taking that and then putting it into Facebook ads and retargeting and then reposting that every single day. Like you don't have to create content and that takes a lot of time, right? So the content is so powerful. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that we're doing, which is kind of combining almost two founder courses is like combining IG Dom and the e-commerce courses we're, we're developing um, influencer promotion strategies for this new brand. And what we're doing is we're using, so, so Instagram is a very sophisticated algorithm. Like, man, you know, I could nerd out on it for a few hours, really thinking about how much behavioral psychology has gone into building this app. I mean, if you really start to understand how, for instance, they have their other suggested accounts to follow, when you go onto an account, you can click on the arrow on the right hand side next to the follow button and it will it will drop down then suggested accounts. Mm. Those accounts have certain things in common with each other, common with the account you're viewing at the moment. And you can start to see through different degrees of separation who's following who, who likes who, who's similar. Then you can start to map out like strategies for networking to people, for gaining followers, for building influence in a space, and you start to see, oh. If I get these 10 people to post about a product, these 500,000 people are going to see that because all those people are following these 10 influencers and they're all following each other. So you start to understand the patterns of how your customers buy and it becomes a very sophisticated tool for dominating marketing, you know? Yeah, 110%. People don't know that though, do they? They, just, they think about just getting followers. Yeah, yeah, like... 
followers is yeah it's it's a vanity metric man it's not like yeah. it doesn't really mean anything it's the relationship with the followers and it's it's if it's real people or not real people that would potentially buy your product or become part of your community or actually are in your target market if you're looking to grow your business or your personal brand or whatnot like it's like it's 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 a real vanity metric it's yeah i mean and also you know you see you see a lot of accounts um that it, across all different spaces that have um crazy engagement even if their followers aren't really really big you know they're mm. not a huge account yeah and i think especially when it comes to like let's say you're you're starting a new business and you want to start doing um guerrilla marketing you're looking for accounts that have you know i don't know maybe two to 15 or twenty thousand followers and those accounts are going to have um really high engagement if they're popular and those accounts are probably more popular for finding or more powerful for finding your target customer and getting sales than um you know, a lot of bigger accounts with lower engagement. Yeah, one hundred and ten percent. I think there's something special around like that kind of bracket, which we call like a micro influencer between you know your five to fifteen, your five to twenty thousand, for multitude of reasons. One, they don't really do heaps of paid posts and promotion, so they haven't just kind of butchered their 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 audience and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, which is so much, you know. And then still virgins, <laughs> and then. I think as well, like you can find some really strong micro influences there where they might not be as big as other accounts like these macro ones, but the relationship they have with their audience and their community yeah. is much more stronger. And that's when you want to work with any influences at any point in time, it's got to be the relationship. It's not the size of the following. So, yeah. you know, engagement is one way to really see that that like you know what does that look like another way is to see okay do they have a youtube account if someone has a youtube account like their relationship with their audience is going to be inherently stronger because you know love them or hate them the kardashians look at like you've been just that relationship that's their youtube channel like the keeping up with kardashians is their youtube channel and they just have so much trust it feels like you know them you know all the sisters you know what's happening in their life and that level of, of relationship if and a lot of vloggers have this with their audience if if someone can peek in and it feels like you know them and oh, you know yeah. they do you know this is what i'm packing for my trip and you know this is this is what's happening with my family that level of relationship if you say oh hey look i've got this awesome water bottle it helps you keep on top of you know what you're drinking every single day and i need to keep up my hydration levels and you know yeah. it's really helped me like it's it's not it doesn't even feel like a promotion you know <sighs> marketers man we're so we're so good for humanity and we're so bad for humanity <laughs> you know just sliding it right in there it's like this is going to help you but i need you to buy this <laughs> i need you to buy this and i promise it will help you the marketer well, you don't want to be manipulative. It's got to be a great product. No, of course, of course. But I want you to buy as many of my great products as you financially can responsibly. Well, look, it, it just comes <laughs> down to if, if, if you believe in your product or your service enough, you shouldn't be, you know, afraid to oh, sell. No, absolutely. And this is also worth noting, in, people keep saying this, in these uncertain times. People keep saying, in uncertain times, uncertain times. Oh, you should be afraid to sell even now, you know, when people are, everyone's feeling weird right now, you know, mm. context, you know, we're, we're in a quarantine right now, whenever you're listening to this, um, because of the coronavirus pandemic and a lot, of, I think a lot of people might feel weird to sell right now, especially, you know, businesses that are maybe service-based businesses and Instagram is a good way to stay connected with your audience and continue to build a relationship with them while you might be repositioning or while you might be, um, you know, working through this challenge yourself. Yeah, I agree. And look, the, the usage has gone up big time. Like totally. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. The amount of like people that are on social is more than ever right now. Where are you looking at your numbers? Where are you seeing your numbers? I don't quote me on it, but, um, so our Facebook ads account manager, he sent us this PDF with like all these next level statistics and yeah, the usage is at an all time high. Yeah. I mean, it, 
Well, that makes sense, right? I mean, I'm sure Netflix. I've heard. I've heard that. Um, I've, sure, I've heard that like Netflix is up, Pornhub is way up, um, uh, Am- Am- Amazon orders are up. I mean, you know, we're just home more. Yeah, we're just home. Um, and yeah, so so it would make sense. And I think even live streams I've seen are getting a lot more attention. Yeah, a lot of people doing live streams now as well. I've yeah. noticed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen celebrities live streaming with each other as well. Celebrities doing doing uh, you know shared live streams. I did a couple um, as well. I think people just crave connection, and Instagram is it's really just a it's a relationship app when it comes down to it. You know, I've made so many friends through this app just through many people through groups, introductions, in the comments. Um, you know, it's brought me a lot of uh, a lot of uh, great relation relationships that have benefited me like monetarily as well too you there are a lot of partnerships that can be built um through the people that you meet in your space on instagram right i mean it's you remember this back in the day when we were like doing motivation mafia and all that stuff let's talk about you know? that oh god are we allowed are we allowed to open up the the sealed files of motivation mafia i wasn't even in it i was just adjacent i was motivation mafia adjacent you were part of the motivation mafia you know are you allowed? Are you allowed to? Uh, has the statute of limitations been lifted? Yeah, we can you know? talk about that. That okay. was just like a group, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just, it was a group, right? And it was a, but it's a good, it's a great social strategy. Period, though, like getting each other. What was it? A group of like what 10, 10 accounts? Who was in it? Yeah, so it was me, Farouk from Good Life, uh, Joe before five a.m. Jason Mill Mentor, uh, Brad Build Your Empire, uh, Ruben Think Grow Prosper. Um, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, Steve, Steve Mayer. Steve Mayer, Agent Stephen. Mm-hmm. Jamie. I can't remember what Jamie was. But yeah, there was mm-hmm. like 10 of us mm-hmm. where we all used to just like promote each other's accounts and, and boost it and, yep. yeah, and, and shout each other yep. out. And it definitely worked. That, well, that was back when like, that was like Instagram still version 1.0 where you could have like a picture of a car and then a guy was like, hustling now is the only option. And he would have like sunglasses on and it would, you know, it'd be like, and but that was like a dope image. Yeah, but like that was a dope image to have. Uh, and now you see that you're like, what, what are you doing? You know, it's like the aesthetic changes, right? Yeah. You know, what's the aesthetic now on Instagram hmm. for business accounts? I don't know. For for business accounts, for me, I think it's all about kind of clean. It's all about um, you can have photos of people, but they've got to be like legit founders um, that you actually know. And then a big part of it as well is um, carousels. I think carousels like that are kind of like a blog post, but it's like a, you know, a listicle where it gives like a top 10 or a top five or just a how to. They're really popular. And I think that's where it's at. And then also what we call meme videos where they're, you know, it's a snippet of a video or a interview or a, a clip. And there's a catchy headline like, a, and you know, the headline is absolutely everything. Um, for us, we see that you know, a good headline is the difference between a few hundred thousand views and not having a few hundred thousand views if we posted a good meme video. Um, so, yeah, and then just the, the uh, you know, the subtitles and, you know, it's really just teaching one thing. Um, so that, that's the kind of content. And then on stories, same, you, that's where you should do most of your selling on stories. It's kind of, you know, your swipe ups, your, your products, your whatnots. Um, and then... Yeah, you still want to have photos of, of like in the business space. Like do swipe us. ups work? What's what, that? What type of conversions? Do you, what type of conversions do you see on swipe ups? Do they work? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What type of conversions do you typically see on on those? Well, look. To be honest, uh, it's not as it's not as high as people clicking on the link in the bio. Right. right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, but like, definitely, if if you've got every single day you post 10 stories over 30 days. Like you can drive tens of thousands of clicks. It depends like, or hundreds of thousands. It just depends on the size or thousands where that, you know, it's just, it's, it's just easy. 
right? And it and it's very light. You know what I mean? So if you if you combine that plus the link in bio, you can really start to generate a lot of traffic. But definitely in terms of a yeah. conversion standpoint, uh, feed posts still do the most kind of, I guess, uh, a damage probably isn't a good word, but the feed posts still re- result in the best kind of actions that people can take if you want to drive sales. So as an example, if we work with an influencer or we wanted to get someone to take an action for founder, you know, to go down a funnel or to get an ebook or even, you know, to buy something like one of our, you know, coffee table books or whatever, we've always seen feed categorically works better. So if you want to work with an influencer and they say, hey, I can do a story post for $50 or I can do a feed post for $50, you would choose the feed post all day, every day. Absolutely. Because it, yeah, oh, yeah. Because it produces a way better result. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have found the same. I found I found the same. I found, um, I feel that stories get engagement because people are quickly clicking through them. Mm. But just because it registers an engagement doesn't mean that it's the same thing as it's being there permanently for them to read and refer to. Um, so I think feed posts, and I, and I noticed generally speaking that like the type of interaction I get off feed posts is usually much higher than what I get off stories. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. Um, I think, look, depending on the kind of business you have, if you have a personal brand, you should be using Instagram stories to build your relationship to be honest with founder, we could do a much better job at that showing behind the scenes. Like I haven't even shown behind the scenes of our new office or anything like where we need to work on that. Same with healthish, um, just showing like cool things behind the scenes, especially if you have a business or a personal brand, but you should be using stories to sell product. And that's what we try and do, uh, for founder. And then we always try and lead with value uh for for everything we do on the feed that's something that we do now we do not post a promotional uh photo image none of that we might if it's a book or a magazine that tends to do okay but if for an example it's a free training for us it's best to kind of have a meme video of that free training uh where we teach somebody something and then if you'd like to see more then click on the link in our bio and that can do very very well Rather than just having a still image that says "click to sign up," correct. Got you. Yeah, no, I like that's a that's a good uh, philosophical position to take, especially as an educational, you know, education first, user first company. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah, but for healthish, we just post photos of um, people using the products, and yeah. health, healthish is just so good though because it's such a it's such a millennial, shiny, beautiful. Like in, in, and we all know that like women are much better on creating more so, like social social movement on the platform. Mm. Um, it's a so it's a it's a female run platform. Period. Yeah. Women create the culture around it. Men are posing, trying to get the attention of women on it, and women run it. And when it comes down to shopping, it's pri- primarily women. I know this. We both live with one. We know how this is. Mm. Yeah, you know. 100%. So if you have a a beautiful glass that's marketed at and, and if you look at I, i've used healthish uh as an example in several presentations i've made so far so tell emily oh, really i always yeah because oh, it's, it's thanks, a great man. site when i'm talking yeah no you guys have done great work and when i look at just the way i mean the commercial the how how the commercial is how the the exact avatar that you're targeting is every single model that's in the video the music um the branding so all that stuff matches up with um, Instagram culture very well. And I think that's something that, you know, if you're going to start a new product or a new service and use Instagram as a platform, it doesn't mean that everything has to look the same, but you should take into account what is, what the platform naturally promotes well, you know, Mm. and does that make sense? Yeah. 110%. Look, there are very trending products or there's kind of visual products, um, yeah and and if you can right and if you do have a visual type product you need to be using instagram period like e-commerce physical if you want to build your personal brand if you have a local based business i know now it's not easy but food like anything hairdressing you know teeth whitening all these kinds of services or personal brands or e-commerce businesses 
It is so powerful. It is the best way to generate profit without relying on Facebook ads because, you know, me and you both know how difficult Facebook ads is. Um, like, it's crazy. You have to compete with people like us where, like, for us at Founder, we have, you know, a fully dedicated uh, media buyer, Andre, who's incredible. And then we have Lucas, who's fully dedicated. All he thinks about is just crazy ads to create at Founder. And then we have, you know, Mario, who's a fully dedicated video editor, where all he's doing is creating just crazy ads that that Lucas is kind of strategizing. And then we have a fully dedicated copywriter that all they do is write ads. Like, like that's what you're competing with, right? Like, it's very, very <laughs> difficult um, right yeah. now. At least in your yeah. space, at least in the entrepreneurship yeah. education space. Yeah, yeah, you know. 110%. Um, Go to another space. Yeah, I agree. But look, Facebook ads, look, I, I would say this any day of the week if – I don't want to start a new company. I'm got more than enough going with founder and then helping Emily shop Emily on the side with healthish. But if I was to start a new company right now and like I needed to, to get my first cut batch of customers, the place I'd be using would be Instagram. 110%. You can't use Facebook. Oh ads. yeah. No, you can't. I mean, you, you, you have to at least be able to, if you're starting fresh, especially if, okay, Think about yourself as as a new business owner, especially in now we're going to a recession and you're like, I got to start something fresh. Now, Instagram has, as we were talking about before, I think we started rolling. We're like, so many people are on Instagram now. You know, it's the usage is going crazy. Would it now be a good time to test your idea on Instagram first to see if it's pleasing to the crowd uh, and use that to build up a natural organic customer test bed and validate some ideas first? And then if you can move through Instagram and make sales organically, then putting that into Facebook ads. I don't know. A strategy, perhaps. Yeah, 110%. Um, so is like, it possible I, to do that? Yeah, 100%. So like, this is something that um, I, I you know, kind of guided Emily through with, with Healthish. Like, so when she was working on the physical products, she got the samples, right? So you get the samples. And then with those samples, took some photos and then started to build the account, right? So... So before the product even was ready to be sold, we did a pre-sale. And through that pre-sale, man, a few thousand dollars all come from Instagram because we had, you know, sub 1,000 followers that were interested in the product and they were interested around living a healthy lifestyle. They were interested in fitness and all that side of things. So hold on, hold on. You made a few thousand dollars off of an account that had less than 1,000 followers while, before you even had the product. Correct. And what was the sequence for that? Okay. So first thing that we did was Emily found photos on like Pinterest that related on and just like gave credit and posted once a day and 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 created an account that was called Healthish Co that posted photos every day, once a day around living a healthy lifestyle. So just kind of you know, photos around that, whether it's food, whether it's fitness, and stuff like that. Then uh, one thing that she did was she went to competitors that, you know, um, for example, like there's a lot of uh, companies out there that sell drink bottles or, you know, then they make a lot of money. Um, and there's a lot of those competitors where they have their own branded hashtag or cu customers of that competitor product would post a photo of them using it or of it, of it in the wild, right? And then she would, every single day, you know, 20 to 50 people follow and engage with their content. And over time, over a few months, you start to build up like, you know, a, a following of engaged buyers of a similar product. Interesting. And then what we did was we, you know, every now and then posted different variations of the healthish bottle because we had the sample yeah. while it was being produced. And then we would say the call to action every time was sign up to the wait list, launching soon, sign up to the wait list, launching soon. And we had a, a simple landing page via Shopify coming soon uh, where people could sign up to the email list. Then we use MailChimp. MailChimp is for free. And then, uh, you know, once, once the, you know, it was getting, you know, a couple of weeks away from it being ready, we had a few hundred subscribers on the email list. And then from there, we just did a launch, 
right? Five emails in, um, and, you know, maybe your seven emails. A couple of weeks we showed behind the scenes. It's coming. Are you excited? You know, send us an email and then off, off you go, right? Um, and then, you know, we launched with an early bird discount and then bang. So because of all of that, we were able to, yeah, on the first day of launch, we made at least, at least $500 on the first day of launch. In the first month, it was a few thousand dollars. And then it just kind of built upon there. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that's such a great grassroots strategy. That's such a great um, use of just the organic engagement. And, And to be honest, like, I think most people, either wouldn't expect or wouldn't want to hear the fact that she's, you know, you, you said she went to 20 to 50 accounts per day, found whose competitors accounts they were engaged with them and did this consistently for a few months beforehand. Yeah. That's, that's what takes a good amount of work. Yeah. Right. No, no, look, honestly, it would take you 10 to half an hour a day. Not even Yeah. 10 minutes Still, to half an hour a day. Consistency. It's, it's the consistency. It's the grunt work. Like in the early days, yeah. like that's just what's required. But like if you're starting a business, you've got to work on one channel. From my perspective, you've got to work on one channel and you've got to build an audience on one channel. And for me, any day of the week, I choose Instagram, right? Yes. Yes. I, I, would, def- I would definitely have to agree. I think, um, I think that there's one of the good things about IG that I still appreciate is I love I love YouTube as well, but the 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 ease of sharing on IG is always much better because there's a lower barrier to entry, and um and YouTube has tried to to remedy some of that. They have stories now, and uh, you can do posts, and you can upload from your phone even, but it's not set up like Instagram is set up, and so there's always going to be that you know I think YouTube goes a bit deeper, but Instagram is a is um more touch points, you know, and through that, that variety of touch points, you can really build some customer relationships. Yeah. 110%. Like, um, we, we, we're trying to grow our YouTube channel. Now we haven't mastered yet. We're on the road to a hundred thousand subscribers. I think we're almost at 80,000 right now. We're doing it for geez, 16 months, uh, 14 months, I'd say 14 months. We've been trying to grow it. And, uh, Look, it's it's definitely hard. Um, like I look at our tracking and everything, and you know, Instagram still is generating more more sa- like way more sales than than YouTube. Oh, of course, but yeah. one thing that is interesting is you know where we can see that the more time we put into YouTube and the more it grows, the relationship we have with our audience would be stronger than Instagram. And will probably one day, one day, maybe, maybe generate more revenue. However, the amount of work required, like where we've got a studio, we've got Charlie who's yeah, a full-time video, yeah. like it's crazy. You know what I mean? I mean, look, I, and I know the context of this, of this conversation is like the benefits of Instagram. And I, I think that those are, those are obviously clear. I think that, um, you know, yeah, there's just a difference in in the type of content that you're creating. I think that IG is always going to have a place as like the home of really easy to consume content and really easy to make content. It's it's popcorn content sometimes, but also there's very deep stuff you can put up on there as well. You can build some very deep relationships. Um, what do you think is going to happen in the future with the platform? I mean, we've seen a good amount of change, but it's hard to sometimes understand what's going to happen next. I have no idea. Yeah, so I think... Um... This is a great question. I think, and what I'm looking forward to, is I think in the near future, you will be able to buy products within Instagram and not even have to leave the application. Mm. So the mm. so so this is what happens in China right now. In their particular social media platforms, you can buy products or services without leaving the platform. Facebook is trying that already. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, yeah that, that's where I think yeah. it's going. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, that like I'm not good at predicting things, but that that's, some, that's something I am certain of, that that's what it will move towards. So that's why 
I believe the you know you just need to build an audience, right? Like any business, right? Any business right now, even during this time, like people, are, like it's so crazy, Daniel. Like so many people are reaching out to me that I've ever seen before, asking if I do mentoring, and I and I don't do that, right? I don't do that. But all the questions that people are asking is how do you build an audience, right? Because people that may have been affected by this or may have not, they may or may not have an audience. But any business, right, you need an audience. Any online business, you need an audience, right? What business isn't online? Well, that's the thing. A lot aren't. Many business, that, that's the point I'm trying to make is if you're not online, you need to be. Correct. And you need you to know. be building your audience. And mm-hmm. I think that's the takeaway is, you know, now more than ever, even during this time, you need to be thinking, how can you build your audience? Because that's your resil- That's part of your resilience plan, right? It's not your foolproof strategy, but if you have an audience, you can, you can survive, right? You can, you can work through it. Um, now I'm not, I want to, I don't want to be insensitive in any way, shape or form. I know that, you know, people, uh, may be going through a tremendously tough time right now. Uh, you know, and I, and I hope everyone, you know, your, your family, anyone listening or watching your family is safe and healthy. Uh, but anyone that is watching that is, is looking to, you know, build a business or start a business. I think the takeaway here is you need to be building your audience, right? No matter what platform you choose, from my personal experience, one of the easiest ways to build an audience is using Instagram. And that's that's not because we, you know, have a course that teaches you how to do that. It's honestly because I, I live in and breathe it myself. Right? I've done it with two oh, companies. Oh now. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we know you live in and breathe it. You are you are a savage, uh, a savage source of energy. Yeah, you just you're all you're you you definitely are drinking your own Kool Aid. That's what they would say. Um, but no, but I think that's why you're so good at it. And the thing about content and the thing about uh, content platforms, audiences is let's go one level up. I've been thinking about this a lot. The the audience itself is it's an asset. You know, people don't always think about audiences and data itself as an asset and um although with instagram you don't own that audience having the audience and having the connection with them through that platform is an asset um and uh and i think that it um just like any asset if you continue to invest in it it will return to you based on your consistency in your investment in it and a lot of people expect assets of any class like financial assets to return immediately an immediate investment Mm -hmm. but that's not how it works and the the return that you get on this type of investment could be cash it could be relationships it could be uh business partnership opportunities it could be um lots of different things uh but the consistent theme is investing in that platform and learning how to invest in it in like a strategic way which i know and this is a blatant plug, but it's also what actually happened. I know that happened for me going through IG Dom and just like having a strategy for some of it's not rocket science. There are a lot of really great insights in it, but a lot of it's just like having a basic strategy for approaching growing an account organically. And it just works. And then you start to put that investment into the asset, which is Instagram and the platform that you have. And then that asset starts to return value in the form of relationships, money, opportunities. Yeah, I think that's a great breakdown. And when you talk about an asset, one thing that I always found interesting, and I didn't know this, like, um, you know, a few years ago when you wrote Rich 20 something, right? One thing that you told me that was really, really fascinating was if you want to get a book deal, one thing that they look at is your assets. It's not how good the book is. It's what assets do you have? And one that was a big sale point for you was your Instagram account. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't. I like to think that it's everything about me that's going to combine for me to have that have had that opportunity. Of course. But I also know that having that Instagram growth 
was, I'll tell you what it was. That was the difference between the agent saying, my agent, uh, Kirsten saying, come back later and let's do work. And her saying yes, allowed her to go out and get me that six figure book deal with the biggest publisher in the world. And you can bet, you better believe, because they told me at the meeting, this is very impressive growth. It shows that a book is, sounds like a good idea for you. Um, so yeah, and, and, and those opportunities, and, and I think that's a general, uh, that's a, that's a general consensus of all social media that the platform is, especially when there's a visible number associated with it is, is an asset people, especially in LA straight up. Let me tell you, <laughs> like, like having followers is the, is there's a form of currency, uh, how much it's worth. I don't know, but there is a form of, of value that people perceive from having a, a big account. Um, or even just a well, a well curated, highly engaged account. And, um, you can build that asset starting from having nothing, just what I call sweat equity, where you're just like putting in the hours of like building it up and getting better at creating content. And you can build something that, I mean, I've had friends that have sold Instagram accounts for like six figures plus, and it's just, they started from nothing. Like it's nothing. It's just tapping on a fucking phone. Can I curse on this? It's like tapping on a phone and like hashtagging stuff and putting up images and it becomes an asset. Like it's it's almost dumb if you think about it. It's pretty cool though. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, interesting though, if you asked yourself the question, right? We're talking Instagram specific. If you ask yourself the question, you had you know a couple hundred thousand followers on Instagram. You had a couple hundred thousand followers on Twitter. You had a couple hundred thousand followers on Facebook. You had a couple hundred thousand followers on Pinterest. You had a couple hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. Ooh, we, we know which we choose. It would probably be a combination, either YouTube or Instagram, probably even, even YouTube because it's so much harder to get subscribers, right? Yeah. Right? It would, it would be YouTube because it's yes. so much harder. But second off would be Instagram, 110%, right? I think you can, here's the thing. It's, it's just, it's like, it's just, again, like, like the whole investment thing. It's just like comparing different types of investment vehicles. You have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or just different type of vehicles. So it's Instagram has its value and so does YouTube. And I think Instagram's barrier to entry is lower because it requires less of you. And so there's a value in that. The, the dollar per subscriber is going to be more high on YouTube yeah, and the engagement and on YouTube gonna, is going to yeah, be higher. We're not going to sit here and lie, right? Like, yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, for instance, putting together an influencer campaign is easier on Instagram than YouTube for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Because you can just post content. We're on YouTube. It's like, you got to make the thing and edit videos. It's a whole thing, you know? And then when you, when it gets really high, highly competitive, now you can, you're can dealing with people who have studios and it's a whole thing. Um, Instagram is, there's a lot of bang for your buck in it, a lot of bang for your buck. And that's important when you're starting a business and you don't have a lot of bucks. You just got a lot of bang, you know? Um, not that you, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. hundred percent. Like I think, yeah, look, quite honestly, yes. Subscribers on YouTube is more valuable than Instagram followers. But if we chose any other platform besides YouTube, you would choose 200,000 followers on Instagram all day, every day. Easily, easily. And the, the time for growth is going to be much quicker on Instagram if you're doing it right. Uh, YouTube is, uh, yeah, it's just a different, I mean, also you're looking at different types of, uh, different types of um, value too as well in terms of like suggested followers on Instagram versus on YouTube. They don't really have that function on YouTube. So it's harder to do category-based research um, because they only have like just the listing of videos with maybe the suggestion on the side. Whereas Instagram is a tiered structure where it's like influencer at the top and then sub-influencers and then account. And you can see all the different types of account. And I'm telling you guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about you know promoting your business and it's new and you have little to limited funds doing a a nano like a nano influencer campaign where you're spending like man 200 to 500 dollars on just getting people involved in shouting your account out growing it getting brand awareness around it getting opt-ins to your email address there's different campaigns you can run but just using that small investment to start growing your um your initial ball and then just using the formula that nathan was saying like having a product or a service sending people to an email list doing a launch taking that money, reinvesting it, cycling it around, 
you know, you can do all that for Insta- on Instagram quickly, easily, effectively. You can test product ideas. I think it's a great uh, a great time to be learning this skill set, especially with what's going on. Yeah, hundred and ten percent. Period. So, what other questions you have for me, Daniel? Oh, God, I just have so many. Um, I noticed that a lot of the different social platforms, and this is this is this relates to IG and what we can bring into the head, but this is something that I wanted to ask you about. I noticed that like a lot of the social platforms are now starting to mimic each other in terms of the format and the layout and the user experience. And I wanted to know, and, and I've also noticed that over the years with hardware, where like the phones start to all look alike, things start to mold into one type of UX. Uh, they start to, it starts to lock in almost. It's like the way you view videos is like this, and the way you move is like by flipping your finger like this. Like it starts to get locked in. Mm. And I wanted to know what your thought was from a from a higher level perspective on, um, like, the state of social media. Do you see there being any category changing effects? For instance, uh, I know this is kind of out there, but like the the integration of VR or the integration of AR that combine with social media to make something completely different than we've ever seen before? Yeah, look, that's a tricky question, man. To be honest, I've never thought about that. <laughs> um, well, that's what we've been asked. Yeah, I, um, I've got no idea. <laughs> I mean, th- okay. We know Elon Musk is inve- is working on Neuralink. Do you know about Neuralink? Yep, yep, heard of it, yep. Where, where it's the computer uploading to the brain and yep. having access to the, you know, okay, so it's like computer internet on the brain. Uh, we know that um, we know that we're getting closer to figuring out virtual reality and augmented reality. All of these things are um, like tangential to the fact that we're always on the phone anyway on social media. Hey, I made another sale. Nice. That we are always on social media. There's got to be a point where some of those things start to intersect. Yeah, well, look, there is no doubt about it that platforms come and platforms go, right? Um, I do know that like Facebook and all their properties are not going anywhere. Um, and And I do know that, yeah, look, one day, I don't know how close we are. I've got no idea that, yeah, we will have some sort of augmented VR where we can put on our goggles and we can go and explore the world. And there's ways that we can speak to our friends and hang out with our friends. And like, there's going to be crazy stuff. I hope I see that in my lifetime. Um, but I think we're pretty far away from that, right? Oh, hell no. Are you kidding me? My great grandparents are still alive. God bless in the corona in the coronavirus. They were born in the 1920s. They had fucking gas lamps in their town. They're they're texting me on iPads now, FaceTiming. Think about that change and then think about where we are now. You will definitely see augmented reality. You'll have a you'll have a memory stick in your brain. I look, I'm wearing AirPods right now. This is basically cyborg. There's this it, this is so close to being inside of my body. I mean, it's it's right there. Ten years, this will be right here on the inside, guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. Well, it's gonna happen. It's gonna I happen. Don't, I don't think that far ahead, man. I well, don't, I don't, I don't look at technology like yeah. I don't know. I do, but I don't. Right? Like you talk to so many founders, you got to be thinking ahead. I do, but I don't. Like yeah, it's it's a tricky one, man. Because like I never thought about what the question you asked me. Off the cuff, yeah, look, maybe I will see all that stuff, but I just think we're so far away from it, like more than people realize. No, I think we're, I, th- I think that, I mean, to define far, 50 years is far, but it's also very close. Look, I look at like the newest innovative social media tool that everyone's raving about is TikTok. Oh, that's a good point. We didn't even talk about TikTok. Right? Like everyone's talking about TikTok. Yeah. And I look at it and it is just a combination of all the different apps. There's no virtual reality. There's nothing crazy about it. And really the crazy thing, like the thing that they can't take away right now is challenges. Like, you know, you got all these different challenges that people are doing and it's fun. It's addictive. And the creators create some cool stuff. 
But you know what I mean? Like that's nothing near closely what you're talking about, man. And like TikTok's on the rise. No, I didn't say t- – I wasn't comparing – uh, Neuralink to TikTok. All I was, you know, TikTok is is Instagram's bastard child, which will probably, which will probably at some point outperform Instagram, maybe in the future. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe I don't know. You know. They have a long way to go. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just talking about in decades, you know, because time moves so quickly. The fact that just just to have some perspective, if you're listening to this right now, we're in the year 2020. In the dystopian, dystopian future, and you know, just the fact that that social media itself is such a conversation point in our daily lives is crazy. Because when you and I were growing up, there wasn't social media has created a whole new thread of conversation and reality than we had growing up. It's a whole new world that we can have conversations about, have thoughts about. Things can happen on social media that just didn't exist when we were growing up. So it's just so crazy to think that. We have made a lot of progress in even just a few decades. Yeah, I agree. I I was just thinking about then, like, why – I was thinking to myself, why couldn't I really answer your question? I think I know why. Because I, I don't try and look too far ahead on that kind of stuff. I just want to know what's working now and just do that. That's – I mean, honestly, that's, that is like uh, – what, what did uh... – what what did Buddha say? Buddha said, "Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Stay in the present, man. You know, just stay in the present. That's how you that's how you do it. Just you know, you just you just keep it going. You just you're just going through the 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 katas. You're doing the formula. You're not thinking too far in the future. Not too much anxiety. Not looking too far to the past. Don't want to have too much regret. Stay in the zone." Yeah, man, just trying to stay woke like you, bro. Oh, I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're ready for this level of wokeness. It's this level of wokeness is painful. You got to grow a, a big beard for this level of wokeness. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to let me into the airport looking like this, man. I got to shave this before I go back to the airport. No, that's not too bad, bro. It's, it's not too bad. I want to get it down to here. I want to. I want to start looking like a Saudi Arabian prince. <laughs> that's my goal. I want. I want to be a. I want to have oil money. So I'm just gonna live into it, manifest it. Yeah. So yeah, man, I, I'm uh, I'm grateful to you, uh, founder. I always, I mean, I have so many fun stories about you. I could go on forever. I got so many fun stories about you. Uh, my wife Sarah, who like is very particular about who she will even interact with, loves Nathan and Emily, which is like that's a very high compliment. You have to understand this woman is a high priestess. She's very selective. She has great taste. So if she likes you guys, you are very good people. And, uh, and I hope that we, kind, man. <laughs> no, it's, Hey, that's, that's what she's saying. Not me. I said the opposite. Um, and hopefully when this is all, uh, well and good, we can come to your wedding. Are you still doing it in Vietnam? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, look, obviously, uh, like we, we kind of stop plans and stuff, but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah plan to do it yeah, overseas. 110% man. Like, yeah. So hopefully you guys can come. Uh, yeah, and hopefully you can make it to Melbourne eventually, man. You stood me up how many times? Two times or something, no, bro, yeah, now? I don't know. You know, look, I, I, I just don't even feel like we're visiting the past. I'm not saying the present. Or maybe maybe I should call upon uh, that San Sebastian trip you owe me, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, like three, I'm like three trips in debt. You know, it's like, here, here's what you got to understand about me. Here's what you got to understand about me. The, the fact that I've gotten to this point is amazing because I, I am, I've put out so much content, but I'm also cyclical where I'll put out a ton of shit and I'll be like, I'm exhausted. I got to take like a month off and then I'll recharge myself energetically and then I'll go back at it. Whereas you will bulldoze through for five years and the accumulated bulldozing of the five years has crushed my email subscriber rate in comparison. So yeah, you're going to win, man. It's okay. Everyone has their strengths, you know. I'm, I admit it. So, and should we give everyone context about that one? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I think you should, bro. Well, okay. So here's the here's the, you, you know, when we first started, when I first started blogging, this is back in like 2012, and Nathan was first developing his concept, which became Founder Magazine. It was first started off as Keys to Success Magazine. 
he emailed me. You know, he's very inquisitive. He's always asking questions, poking around, taking notes, trying to understand what's working, and then going back in his little lab and testing things. You know, he stays low key, but he he he, he emailed me and he's like, hey, you know, I'm just. Over here, I see you have a blog. I saw you on Under 30 CEO. That's cool. What's this blogging about? How you doing? I'm like, okay. So, you know, we got to become friends um, later over a period of uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe within that year. Uh, I think you it was a couple being, years. When you got sued? No, no. After. after no, I thought we were talking about the competition that we did. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. no. I was going to say you got sued by Success Magazine for them for you taking their their slogan so you rebranded the founder you know a couple of years after that uh you were starting to build up your email list and you're like oh what do you know about building an email list and i thought oh man i know all about email list building like i've been doing this i am very experienced and uh, and i was you know i am but you're like oh well let me see if i can try this so man you know nathan just he he went to work and uh, he just started crushing, man. And he just started putting out free opt-ins and just like optimizing the site. I remember there was like, there was like, there was like three opt-ins just to interact with fucking founder.com. It was on the thank you page. It was, you know, pop-ups and headers and free magazines and like all these great bribes. And I was just blogging, okay? You gotta understand. I'm just writing. I'm doing pretty good for a one-person blogger, but you took this to the whole other level and you just eclipsed. Cause you know, I'm getting like, I'm writing an article and I'm getting a couple hundred subscribers and be like, that's pretty good. Right? Like, that's pretty good. And you're like, oh, you're, you know, a couple months into this, you're starting to really get strong. It's like the kid that starts to go to the gym and starts to get those gains. And one day you see him and you look at the mirror and you're like, man, his arms are bigger than mine now, you know? So, so, so yeah, you eclipsed me and you were using Instagram the whole time. And, uh, and you funnel all that into a webinar and you crushed it. And you crushed me, and I owe you a trip to San Sebastian. I'm sorry. I don't even know where that is. I agreed to it. I don't even know where San Sebastian is. You said, let's do a competition. I said, San Sebastian, sure, whatever. Don't even know where it is. It's in Spain, man. <sighs> well, now I know. Well, I can't go to Spain now. Sorry, coronavirus. We definitely got to do that, dude. We definitely have we to do, have do to that. Do we do have to do it. And I don't know if you know this, but for a long time, you were winning that that competition of who can get to 100,000 subs. And I was just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to push really hard and build and keep building. And this, and then, and then I would, I would not say anything. And then when it would come close to, to getting there, I would say, Hey man, like I've done it. And yeah, uh, this is where I'm at because it, because every time we gave updates, <laughs> it was like, we'd all push really hard, but that was like, that was really fun dude. like to say, yeah, fun. I can build a hundred thousand subscribers in, I can't even remember how long it took us. Like each of us, like, yeah, I don't know. That was least, a fast growth period. Yeah. At least like six months or something like that. But we did like, yeah. we just crushed it. And like, and these are real people too. It's like, not like we bought or like, I didn't cheat. I know no. I didn't cheat. I know you wouldn't have no, like, these are real people that we added to our no. email list for our respective companies. And, you know, we built relationships and help these people and all these kinds of things. And I think that's, um, it's not just about the number, right? It's about the audience, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, ex exactly. And, um, and I think you'll see that once you, once you get into it and, once you start um, taking the platform more seriously, there's, you know, there's a way to look at Instagram as a consumer where you're only consuming content. And then once you flip the switch and say, I'm going to be a creator, you start to look at the platform differently. You start to say, oh, this is a way for me to help people. This is a way for me to sell my services. This is a way for me to like build a brand. Whereas a lot of people are still, we're still programmed to only consume. You know, when you decide I'm going to be a creator, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to really go out and do this then the, the usefulness for the platform changes a lot. Yeah, I agree. 110%. So, um, as opposed to waste. This was, um, this was really like, this is a cool episode, man, because it was like really Joe Rogan style, like very, very <laughs> conversational. It wasn't like the typical Nathan, how'd you get your job? Like X, Y, Z, tell me about this. Tell me about that. Tell me about this. And like, it was awesome, man. So like, thanks so much for doing this, brother. I don't want to know any of those things. I already know those things. <laughs> I want to know what you think is going to happen in the future of neurotech. Um, well, I appreciate you. It's an honor 
to uh, to have the opportunity to be your friend. I tell you this all the time. I try to give you a lot of compliments. I don't know if people are blowing you up or giving you too much compliments at home. I try to give you a lot of compliments. You know, it's good to hear from your friends. Hey, thanks. You know, I appreciate you. So I try to make sure you know. Yeah, you're, you're far too kind, man. I appreciate you too, brother. And I look forward to catching up uh, LA trip or maybe you should come to Melbourne or at my wedding. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's always good times, always good laughs. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks so much, bro. The founder mission is to help you create an ass-kicking business and help you learn straight from the mouths of world-class founders. Get your free printed edition of Founder Magazine featuring Sir Richard Branson. Just cover shipping and handling at founder.com forward slash Branson.